Finding our way around is something that most of us take for granted. GNSS or GPS is in our smartphones and sat-navs. What you might not realise is that it's also a cornerstone of our critical national infrastructure. The UK government recently released a publication that suggested that a GNSS outage would cost the UK economy £1 billion per day. I'm here at PA's Global Innovation and Technology Centre to meet consulting physicist Richard Claridge. We're going to find out why quantum navigation could be a solution. Hi Richard, good to see you. Hey Sean. So, why quantum navigation? If you've seen the Bond film Tomorrow Never Dies, you'll know that you can cause some havoc by blocking or even worse, manipulating the GNSS signal. The thing is you don't need to be a Bond villain to do this anymore. In fact, a recent study showed that you can build a GPS spoofer, so something that actively lies, for about $250. So think about that. For $250, the amount of damage you can do to shipping, fishing, financial services, medicine, it's a lot more than $250. That's why you need a backup. Now, you can navigate with tools that aren't GNSS and aren't quantum, and that's a safety system on planes, but the challenge with this is they only work for a certain period of time before they become inaccurate, which is because they drift. The reason quantum systems help us here is because, unlike the classical systems, they're based on quantum properties. Now, quantum properties don't change. Um, they're fixed values and sort of the way the universe is made. So what you end up with with a quantum system is a system that doesn't really drift over an appreciable period, um, but one where the measurements are made at point of use, so they're much harder to intercept or corrupt. That sounds great. Let's go and find out how it works. So we're here in one of PA's labs. I was wondering if you can tell me how quantum navigation works. Okay. So like a lot of technology, it's conceptually quite simple and practically quite hard to do. But the way acceleration works is I, I have something I can measure and I allow the world to move around it. And that allows me to make measurements of a change, so an acceleration. That can be a spring or that can be a cloud of atoms in a box. Okay. Um, the quantum one is the cloud of atoms in a box. <laughs> so we need to trap the atoms. Atoms want to move around um, because they're warm. So we need to reduce their temperature, reduce their energy. And the way we do that, because we're physicists, is we shine lots of lasers on them. Of course. So take my cloud of atoms. They are moving around at a certain speed. Speed is temperature is energy. So when I shine my laser on them, they glow. Um, that glow is them losing energy. So we end up with a cloud of atoms that's lost a huge amount of energy to the point at which they're barely moving. That means they're well trapped and we can start to use them to make measurements. So now I've got my cloud of atoms, how does the measurement work? Basically more lasers. Um, so I've got my cloud and I shine my first pulse of laser on it, split it in two. And then I hold half of it and allow the other half to move under acceleration. Here's the quantum bit. As atoms are both waves and particles, as this part moves, it just becomes slightly out of sync with the other half. And this is measurable. Uh, this is called interferometry. So we bring the two groups back together using another laser pulse. And this combined group will emit light of basically a different colour, just ever so slightly. The difference in colour corresponds to an acceleration. Because I have an acceleration and I know where I started, I'm able to say I moved in this direction for some time at an acceleration, and I moved in this direction for some time at an acceleration, and so on. And this is called inertial navigation, which allows us to move only by knowing where I was and how far I've moved in each direction, which means you don't need an external source like GNSS. Got it. So what's the future of quantum navigation technology? Quantum navigation systems will be an enormously important backup for GNSS systems in the event that anything should go wrong, or in the event that you're trying to navigate somewhere where there is no GNSS, so space and underwater being the obvious ones. The other thing that quantum systems will do is help existing inertial navigation systems be more accurate. The challenge with the quantum system is they're not particularly fast, but it's very accurate. So a hybrid system takes the best of both worlds with the fast systems we already have and the accuracy and um, stability of the quantum system. And pulling those together will mean we have an even 
more improved inertial navigation system than we already have. And is PA actively involved in these projects? Yeah, so we've um, just con we've concluded one project in this space and we're actively involved in another. Um, they're both funded through Innovate UK um, with the two projects having partners like uh, Cole Quanta, Airbus, Fraunhofer um, and BAE Systems. So really the whole way along the supply chain. Um, the first project ended up producing this. This is a life-size mock-up of um, an atom trap. And you see this little sphere in here. That is my ball of trapped atoms that I was talking about earlier. And these are the cooling lasers. This is very much smaller than other systems of its type. Now the second project that we're doing at the moment is to take this system and engineer it so that it can be put on a plane. And what that will do is provide a real world test and demonstration that this technology can work in an aerospace environment. Thank you, Richard. That's been a fascinating introduction to how quantum navigation works. And it's great to hear that PA is at the cutting edge of getting this technology into the real world. That's it for this episode of How Things Work at PA's Global Innovation and Technology Centre. We hope you join us again soon.